So this is a part two of reviewing for the big 100 point test this Friday. This is the second half of the test. It is a two sided test, total of 25 questions technically. So right here you have questions 15, 16, 17, and 18 on the actual test. Even though right here it's eight, nine, 10, 11, it's still uh, 15, 17, 15, 16, 17, 18 on the actual test. So notice that the first thing they ask for is to find the slope and that's totally logical because the only thing you could do with two points is find the slope using the slope formula. So I'm gonna zoom in right here. I'm gonna label my coordinates. And then I'm gonna write down my formula. And then of course, when I use my formula, I'm gonna do the division and the subtractions first and then plug in my values. So y2 is negative 12, y1 is negative nine, x2 is seven, and x1 is three. So I changed the minus minus to plus plus. So my slope is actually negative three over four, perfect. So my slope is negative three fourths, okay? And on your answer column, you're gonna go to that question where it said find slope, and you're gonna write that down, m equals negative three fourths, and you get one point just for that, okay? Now after that, if you look at the, uh, the next question, it says write point slope form. Okay, so it's telling you uh, what to do. So you're gonna use the slope that you just found, and you obviously need a point, and they give you two points. So we're gonna use the first point, and I want you to use the first point also on tomorrow's test, okay? So we need point slope form, and let me actually write down what the point, for, point slope form looks like. And of course, when you plug it in, uh, plug it in with blank spots, and then what we're gonna do is plug in the information that we need to plug in. For example, y1, y1 is up here, negative nine. I'm gonna plug it right in here. So that's gonna be a negative nine, which ultimately changes to plus nine. And now our slope is three fourths, negative three fourths. Let's plug it in right there. It's negative three fourths. And our x1 value is three, so plug in three. And ladies and gentlemen, that is your next answer. On number nine, it says write down your point slope form equation. That's it right there. Your point slope form equation is y plus nine equals negative three fourths parenthesis x minus three. And you get a point for that. And then we need standard form, okay, standard form. So I need to take that equation, let me rewrite it. And what we're gonna do is take that point slope form equation and write it in standard form. Now standard form, you need to remember, is capital AX plus capital BY equals capital C, which means that you don't want fractions. And what do we have here? We have a fraction. So right here, it would be a great idea to multiply everything by the denominator four. So you're gonna multiply everything by four. Check it out, let me zoom in first. I'm gonna multiply everything by four. So the y times four, the nine times four, the fraction times four, and not the inside of the parentheses. The parentheses protect the x and the minus three. You don't mess with the inside. Because whatever you do to this outside fraction, it's like if you did it to the inside, guys, because of the distributive property. So what I have now is my new equation, four y plus 36 equals the four and the four cancel, negative three parentheses x minus three. So I still need to get rid of those parentheses. Standard form doesn't have uh, the parentheses right here. So I need to get rid of those parentheses by distributing. So I'm gonna say negative three times x, that's negative three x. Negative three times negative three is positive nine. I have the equal sign, I have the four y plus 36. And now I need to get the x and the y on the left side of the equation and get the 36 on the other side of the equation. So I'm gonna do one step at a time. I'm gonna go plus three X to move it over, plus three X. So I'm gonna have three X plus four Y plus 36 equals nine. Then I subtract 36 and subtract 36. And ladies and gentlemen, now I really do have it in slope intercept form. My slope intercept form, uh, not slope intercept form, standard form. My standard form equation is capital A, which is three, x plus b y equals c and that's our standard form 
equation. Are you with me? Okay. So that standard form equation you're going to write for the next answer spot up there, 3x plus 4y equals negative 27. Now for the final one, write slope-intercept form. Well, you're going to have to take that standard form equation, 3x plus 4y equals negative 27, and you're going to have to rewrite it in y equals mx plus b form. So you need to get y by itself. Subtract 3x first. To get it in y equals mx plus b form, you almost have it there. You have 4y equals negative 3x minus 27. So you divide by 4 for your final step. And we will have our slope intercept form equation y equals negative 3 fourths x and then minus, wait, 27 divided by 4, you can't do it, right? So we're just going to leave it 27 fourths. And that's totally fine. As a matter of fact, on the test, I think when we do the slope intercept form of this one, we do get a fraction as well. Okay, let's move on. So that's four points right there on the test. Now the final part of the test is dealing with parallel, perpendicular, or neither. And we're going to have three comparison questions. So on the test, it's going to be 19, 20, and 21 instead of 12, 13, and 14. But I'm going to give you these two equations, well, similar to these two equations. And I'm going to ask you, are these parallel, perpendicular, or neither? In order for you to see the slope, you need to make it look like y equals mx plus b or point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. So the first one, it is in point slope form. The first one, I could see that my slope is 1 half. The second one is not in slope intercept form yet. So I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and divide by 2. And now my second equation becomes y equals 1 half x minus 7. So let me ask you this. Is that equation that has the slope 1 half yes. parallel to this one? Yes. yes, it is. So 12 is parallel. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Let's not write it out. We're just going to say A. So 12 is A because A is parallel. That's how it's going to be on the test. Number 13, what do you guys say? Parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Well, we, have to find the slope. we have to find the slope first on that first equation. So you're going to divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. And you could already see the slope right here. Are those, are those slopes exactly the same okay so first of all are they exactly the same no so they're not parallel perpendicular are opposite reciprocal slopes so let me ask you this if I take this three halves and I change the sign and I flip the fraction will it be two-thirds no if you change the sign it'll be negative two-thirds so so in order for this to be perpendicular it would they have to have, it have to be negative two thirds in order for it to be per perpendicular. So this one is neither. This one's neither. So you're gonna put a C right next to 13. So just because it doesn't have the negative, just because it doesn't have the negative, it can't be perpendicular because they have to be opposite reciprocal slopes. And now for the last one right here, the slope is three halves. And over here, when I divide by negative three and divide by negative three, what slope is this one over here? That's gonna be perpendicular slope because this one's positive 3 over 2 this one's negative 2 over 3 so it really does change sign and it really does flip over here becomes 2 over 3 so this one is perpendicular so this one would be uh, B option B perpendicular so we have that portion down and uh, I might as well tell you now I'm not using my teacher voice anymore because I'm not actually in class I'm right here in my classroom by myself so I'm using my regular voice on this next section. Then again, I could use my Batman voice if you want. Yeah, I'm Batman. So let's do number 15. On this part, you need to know. Okay, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. Anyway, um, let's do this part. Uh, number 15, it says write an equation in slope-intercept form. So what's slope-intercept form? That is y equals mx plus b and of course you need an m 
and you need a B in order to write it in slope intercept form. Um, do they give us an M? Well, indirectly they do. Let's continue reading the instructions. Check it out. It says, find, uh, write the equation in slope intercept form of the line that passes through the given point. So they do give you a point, and might as well label that point x1, y1 right now. And they also, if you keep reading, so they give you a point and is parallel to the graph of the given equation. So they're telling you that the equation that you want to write in y equals mx plus b form is going to be parallel to this one. So what we really need to know is the definition of the word parallel. What does it mean for two equations to be parallel? That means that they have the same m value, the same slope. Okay, So indirectly, they're giving us a slope. This slope is 4 thirds, which means that our slope is also 4 thirds. Okay? Now all we need is the b value, then we could write in y equals mx plus b. So at this point, you have two options. You could plug everything that you have, the x, the y, and the m, plug it all into y equals mx plus b, the x, the y, and the m, plug it all in there so you could solve for b, and then once you know b, you could write it in y equals mx plus b form. Or you could say, uh, I have a point, I have a slope, I'm going to write it in point slope form. Um, one thing's for sure, once you find the slope, when they tell you that this equation is parallel to it, and that means you have the same slope, so once you take that four-thirds out of there, you don't need this equation ever again doing this problem. You already got the slope, which is four-thirds, so you could just scratch it out if you want. You don't have to deal with it anymore. So anyways, uh, I might as well explain it in both different ways, using slope-intercept form and also using point-slope. So like, let's say you're not feeling too comfortable with uh, point slope form. You could take this uh, m value and plug it in right here. You could take this y value of 3, put it in right there, and the x value of 12, put it in right there, and multiply it by the m. So let me rewrite that equation. Instead of y, I am going to put 3. And then equals, and instead of m, I'm going to put 4 thirds times. And instead of x, I'm going to put 12. And of course, the plus b, we're going to leave it plus b. And when we solve this equation, we're first going to solve by multiplying the m and the x value. So let's actually multiply them. And we'll see that the 12 on top really does cancel with the 3 on the bottom. Now, if you don't like canceling, you could always say, OK, 4 times 12 is 48. And 48 divided by 3 is uh, 16. Um, but the easier thing to do would be, oh, 12 on top, 3 on the bottom. 12 divided by 3 is 4. and then 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, either way you get 16. We still have the plus b, we still have the equal sign, still have the 3. Let's uh, subtract 16, and we will have negative 13 equaling b. So now that we know that our b value is negative 13, now we could write our equation in y equals mx plus b plus negative 13. I probably shouldn't have put the plus. I should, should have just written minus 13. And there's our slope intercept form equation that passes through that point that is parallel to this line right here. Now let's say um, you don't, you want to try the other method. So let's say we go back to this portion right here. Let's pretend that we didn't know b. Let me put b off the screen right there. Let's pretend that all we know right now is the point and the slope. We could have used this point slope form. Okay, so again, let's, uh, let's pretend that, as a matter of fact, um, let me do this. Let me put a little block right here. Let's pretend we don't see that B value, okay? And uh, let me write down my point slope form. And after writing down the point slope form, it's a good idea to rewrite it with blank spots. And then plug in your values. So we said Y1 was three, the M value, because it was parallel, we knew that our slope was the same as the other one, which was 4 thirds. And the x value is 12. Okay, so you could use the point slope form, and then this is the equation, but you just need to change it to get in slope intercept form, to get the y by itself. So you could distribute the 4 thirds, and then get rid of this minus 3 by adding 3, and it'll be in slope intercept form. So if I were to go 4 thirds times x, it's simply 4 thirds x. If I go 4 thirds times negative 12, that is a negative 48 over 3, which is 16. Or you could, again, 
uh, cancel the 12 on top with the 3 on the bottom and get a 4, right? 12 and 3 cancels, you have a 4 times 4, which is 16. Either way, you get 16, right? 4 times 12 is 48. 3 times 1 is 3. 48 over 3 is 16. So we have a 16 right here. We have the equal sign. We have a y minus 3. All I need to do now is add 3 to both sides. And we'll have y equals 4 thirds x minus 13. And that's our slope intercept form equation. So ladies and gentlemen, I've shown two different methods. This is a completely different method uh, from the first one. This one's using uh, what they gave, what we have at the beginning. We have a point, we have a slope, we use point slope form and we changed it to slope intercept. Or you could have done what we did over here, which was to take the x value they gave us, the y value they gave us, and the m value that they gave us indirectly because it was parallel, and use those guys, the x, y, the m, and plug it into y equals mx plus b, and solve for b, and then write our equation. But as you can see, it's the same exact equation. y equals 4 thirds x minus 13, y equals 4 thirds x minus 13. It's totally up to you. So let's move on to this uh, next one. The next one's even more challenging. Uh, I'm not going to show both methods on that one. I'm just going to do one method. The next one's more challenging because when I tell you that your line is parallel to this line, you still don't know the slope of this line. So when they tell you it's parallel, technically they're indirectly giving you the slope value. But the problem is you cannot see the slope because it's in standard form. So what you need to do is rewrite it in slope intercept form so you could actually see the slope. So subtract 4x, subtract 4x, you're going to have 3y equals negative 4x plus 1. Your final step would be to divide everything by 3. And you'll have y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 1 third. Whoop, sorry, that was my bad. My voice, it just jumps out sometimes. My bad. Um, so uh, that's our slope intercept form equation right there. And now we could identify the m value, right? So see, on the original standard form equation, we didn't know what the slope was. So what we did was we, we moved it around and we changed it from standard form. We switched it to slope intercept form and now we could actually see the slope. Now, why do we want to see the slope? Because our line is parallel to this one, which means it's the same exact slope. Remember, parallel means same slope. So our slope over here on the side is negative 4 thirds. Once we know that, we never have to look at this stuff again. We don't even have to see that equation anymore, okay? Like, this is done with. You don't have to look at it anymore, okay? Now, we are faced with a slope and a point, and now we could write our equation either in point-slope form, or uh, we could use y equals mx plus b um, to plug it all in to solve for b. So it's totally up to you guys. I want to go with uh, point-slope form this time. And of course, let's use the blank spot. Rewrite it with blank spots. And then uh, let's actually plug in our x value and our y value. Our y1 is 6. Our m value we said was negative 4 thirds. How do we get that? By doing all this nasty work over here that we scratched out. Um, and then uh, our x1 value is negative 5. And the minus minus has to change to plus plus. So there's our point slope form equation. All we need to do now is change it to slope intercept. So let's distribute negative 4 thirds times x, negative 4 thirds x, negative 4 thirds times 5. You could put the 5 over 1. That'll be a negative 20 over 3. And we still have the y minus 6 equaling that stuff. Now you want y by itself. And you might be a little. Uh, intimidated by the fractions. You could temporarily get rid of all the fractions by multiplying everything by 3. So might as well do that. Multiply everything by 3. The 3's cancel. 3's cancel. 3y minus 18 equals negative 4x minus 20. And let's continue working here. Let's get the y by itself. So we're going to go plus 18 plus 18. And we will have 3y equals the 18's cancel, 18 take away 18 is 0, uh, negative 4x minus 2. And my final step will be to divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. 
y equals negative 4 thirds x minus 2 thirds. And that is OK to end up with uh, equations that have fractions in your b value. It's all right. So let's move on to our final section. I don't have to rush through this portion. We're already way over our time limit on this video. Um, right here, they give us a point, and they tell us that our line is perpendicular to the line given to us. Okay, so remember, perpendicular means uh, opposite reciprocal slopes. In other words, you have to change the sign and flip the fraction. So I know, indirectly, I know that my slope is going to be a positive 3. Now, how did I conclude that? Well, this slope is negative 1 third, and I need to change the sign and move the 3 up there and the 1 down here. So when I take the, the 1 over 3 and flip it, it becomes 3 over 1. And like we said, it becomes positive. So my slope is really positive 3 over 1, which is just 3. And now at this point, all I need to do is uh, label my point and decide, do I want to use point slope form? Do I want to use slope intercept form? Whatever you want. There's many roads to the same place. I'm going to go with slope intercept. Slope intercept is y equals mx plus b. And I'm going to take what they give me to find out what I still need. What do I still need? Well, I need two things to, to do a slope intercept form. I need the m and I need the b. I need to find the b. So let me plug in what I have. Instead of my y, I'm going to plug in a negative 2 for y. So it's going to be a negative 2 for y. And then I have equals, and then I have m, which is 3, and then times x. And x is the coordinate, uh, x value in the coordinate is negative 2. And I am multiplying, and then plus b at the very end, plus b. So let's do the math. We're going to end up with negative 2 equals negative 6 plus b. And then I, of course, uh, add 6 to get the b by itself. Add 6. I want to have 4 equals b, b equals 4. Now that I know my m and my b, I could write my slope intercept form equation. y equals 3x plus 4. Done. So I'm going back to my teacher voice. Apologize. Anyways, right here on number 18, um, would they give us a point and they tell us that our equation is perpendicular to this equation right here. Now the thing is, I don't know the slope of it, so I need to rewrite it in slope-intercept form first. I need to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 4x, subtract 4x. I'm going to rewrite it. It's going to be 3y equals negative 4x minus 6. Are you with me? Next, I divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. So now I have my y equals uh, negative 4 thirds x um, minus 2. And ladies and gentlemen, that right there is my slope intercept form equation of the original. So check this out. All I've done is taken all I've done is taken the original standard form equation, which I cannot see a slope in. I change it to slope intercept form, and now I could see the slope. So if I see this slope of negative four thirds, and they tell us on the instructions that my line is going to be perpendicular to this line. Again, perpendicular is not same slope, that's parallel. Perpendicular is what kind of slope compared to this one? You have to change the sign and flip the fraction. They're called opposite reciprocal slopes. So this one's negative 4 thirds, so I know that my slope is going to be positive, but instead of 4 thirds, it's going to be 3 fourths. Are you with me? Once you find out the slope, positive 3 fourths, from this slope, because it was perpendicular to this one, you change the sign and flip it, then you no longer need any of this. You don't need this original standard form equation. You don't even need the slope intercept form equation. You just don't need it anymore. You got what you needed out of it. And what, what is it that we got? We got our slope out of it, 3 fourths. So what do we have now? We have a point that they give us, which is technically an x and a y value. And we also have a slope that we just got out of this uh, perpendicular line that they gave us. So anyway, now we have to write the equation either in, oh, we need to write an equation given the point and the slope. So we could go with point slope form or we could go with uh, slope intercept form. What do you guys want? So let's go with point slope. 
And of course, when you use point slope, let's rewrite it with blank spots so we don't make mistakes. So our y1 value comes from the coordinate uh, negative 6 and negative 5. So the y1 value is negative 5. The m value, which we got from the perpendicular equation that they gave us, is positive 3 fourths. And the x1 value from our point is negative 6. So the uh, negative 6, the negative negative 6, actually becomes positive. And that is our point slope form equation. This also becomes positive. But the instructions say to write it in slope intercept form, not point slope form. So I either need to distribute the fraction or multiply everything by 4. I'm just going to distribute the fraction. So I'm going to go uh, 3 fourths times x. That's 3 fourths x. 3 fourths times 6. I could put it over a 1. It's going to be 18, positive 18 over 4, and then equals uh, y plus 5 over here on this side. So now, uh, if you want to get rid of those uh, fractions, you could get rid of them by multiplying everything by the denominator 4. So you could go times 4, times 4, times 4. It'll get rid of the fractions for a little while. You'll have 4y plus 20 equals, that cancels, 3x, that cancels, plus 18. So for the final two steps, let's get rid of the 20 by subtracting 20 here and subtracting 20 over here. Rewriting our equation up here, it's going to be a 4y um, equals 3x minus 2. And then you divide by 4, and you will get y equals 3 fourths x minus 1 half. And that is your final answer for this question.